All right. Uh, well, I do have a word for you on today. If you have your word, turn with me to the book of Genesis. The book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 17 to be exact. Uh, it shouldn't take you long to find Genesis. Uh, uh, just, you know, skip over the contents and just flip over a few little pages and you will find Genesis right there. Genesis chapter 17. Uh, very, very familiar text um, within the Christianity um, world here. Very, very familiar text. Uh, we're going to look at verses 15 through 17. Genesis 17, verses 15 through 19. All right, it reads as follows. It says, verse 15, it says, and God said unto Abraham, as for Sarah, thy wife, thou shalt not call her name Sarah, but Sarah shall her name be. And I will bless her and give thee a son also of her. Yea, I will bless her and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall be of her. Then Abraham fell upon his face and laughed and said in his heart, Shall a child be born unto him that is a hundred years old? And shall Sarah that is ninety years old bear? And Abraham said unto God, O oh, that Ishmael might live before thee. And God said, Sarah thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed. And thou shalt call his name Isaac, and I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his seed after him. Amen. If you are taking notes on today, I want to come from the topic. God will sometimes make you laugh. God will sometimes make you laugh. Um, Grace Center has, has God ever made you laugh? Um, now I'm not talking about, you know, you picturing God telling not, not jokes. <laughs> uh, but what I'm talking about is when God tells you something that you are to accomplish or something that he wants you to do and Within yourself, you say, hmm. Mm -hmm. Has God ever told you anything that you were to accomplish and it was like so far-fetched in your mind and you was like, hmm. Mm -hmm. Sometimes grace and God will make you laugh. He'll tell you what you're going to be before you become what you are going to be. But... You look at where you're at and where you're at does not match with the promise of where he said he was going to take you. So in our limited comprehension, we try to figure out how all of this is going to take place. Now, we know God is faithful. We know that God cannot lie. And we know that he always keeps his promises, but we cannot figure out how is all of this going to take place. Um, so here in the text, Grace Center, we see God telling Abraham that he was going to produce a child by the name of Isaac. Now, for you Bible scholars, you know that this is not the first time that God told Abraham that he was going to bear a child. Um, in Genesis chapter 15, when you go back and look at that two chapters earlier, uh, God spoke to Abraham in a vision. And he told him that he was going to produce a child. You remember the scene when God told Abraham to look at the stars in the sky. He asked Abraham, could he even count the stars in the sky and Abraham could not count the stars in the sky and 
Uh, God told him, that's how many of the seed that is going to come out of you. Yeah. God told Abraham before that he was going to produce a child. And then in, in Genesis chapter 16, Sarai comes up with an idea to help God out. Uh, years went past and there was no sign of a child. So uh, Sarai, his wife, decides that uh, uh, it's taken a long time for the promise to come to pass. Uh, do you know anyone that has tried to help God out after God made them a promise? Maybe that's yourself. You try to help God out when he has made you a promise. Uh, um, God said this is what's going to happen and the job of Abraham and Sarah at the time, their job was to be patient. It was to be patient. Uh, I, I saw something years ago in a Christian bookstore. I believe it was on a, on a coffee mug. Uh, and it said, um, God help me with being patient and please Harry. <laughs> Let me say that again. God help me with being patient. And please Harry. <laughs> Interesting phrase. Interesting way to approach God. Yeah, there are certain times, Grace Santa, when we are impatient. And then there are certain times also when we are just simply flat out disobedient. God says to us, take a right and we take a left. Uh, he'll say to stay and we decide to go. He'll say to hush and we decide to talk. Sometimes we're not just impatient, but sometimes we're just disobedient. Sarah says, uh, uh, let's help God out. Yeah, let's, let's, let, let's help uh, out the one who's omniscient, the one that's all knowing and the one that sees all. Let's let's help out the one that's uh, omnipotent, the one that's all powerful. Let's let's help out the one that owns a cattle on a thousand hills. Let's let's help out the one that on this side of heaven we cannot see him face to face because of his glory. Let's help him out. Well, that's what Sarah tried to do. Uh, she tried to help God out by giving Abraham, her husband, permission to sleep with the maid. <laughs> um, she gave him permission to sleep with the maid. And when, 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 when Abraham slept with Hagar, the maid, she conceived a child and gave birth to to a boy by the name of Ishmael. Now some of you may be asking, why would Abraham's wife, Sarah, at the time was her name, why would she allow Abraham to sleep with Hagar, the maid? Well, you have to understand the culture at that time. You see, at that time when women could not produce or conceive a child, they were looked down upon. And if they could not produce a child, what they would do, um, they would give their husbands permission uh, to sleep with another woman, uh, a, 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 a handmaid, to produce a child. But yet, um, the wife would also, um, I guess, be the mother of the child and so forth um, that was culturally accepted in those days don't don't try that today <laughs> husbands don't 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 go to your wife and say well it's in the word it's right here uh, 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 Sarah allowed Abraham to sleep with the maid you know don't 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 try that don't don't try that <laughs> different times different culture at the time, it was accepted back then. It's definitely not accepted now. Don't, don't, don't twist the word of God. 
Well, you may be twisted. You may get in a headlock. Don't, 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 don't try that. Hmm. But she allowed Abraham to sleep with the maid, Hagar, to produce a child. Now, Grace said, this is not the plan that God had in place for Abraham and Sarah. He never intended for Abraham to sleep with Hagar to produce a child and that child be the child of the promise. But watch this. This still does not stop God from fulfilling his promise. No, no. It, it, it still does not void out the promise that God made to Abraham. Fast forward to Genesis chapter 17 here, verse 15. God comes back. Watch this. God comes right back to Abraham and tells him that he and Sarah are going to give birth to a child. God, he goes on to tell Abraham that not only is Sarah or Sarah at the, at the time is going to give birth, but he changes her name from uh, uh, Sarah to Sarah. Okay. God changes her name okay, from Sarah to Sarah, which means uh, it means princess. Okay. And he goes on to tell her that, that she would be blessed. All right, she would be blessed and she'll be able uh, to be called a mother of nations. But hold on. Time out. Flag on the play. Um, I, I, I told you earlier that in Genesis 16, Sarah decided to help God out by being impatient. But by the grace of and the mercy of God, God still comes back to Abraham and by the actions of God, God is saying, I can still use you. <laughs> I, I, I don't think you hear me now, Grace Center. God comes back to Abraham and he's essentially telling Abraham, you guys are impatient, but I can still use you. <laughs> um, I told this story years ago uh, at the Grace Center about how at our old house, uh, when we had first moved in, we, we wanted to, to, to paint, you know, the entire house, you know, paint every room in the house and so forth. And, you know, um, when we would go to the store, we would see different paint colors and so forth. Uh, but they also had a, a, a section of paint that um, the paint did not come out the color or the desired color that the previous customer wanted. In other words, the, the customer wanted a certain type of color, but when they mixed the paint, the paint came out something different than what they expected. They were expecting a certain type of color to put on their walls. But when they mixed the paint and when they looked at it, the paint did not match up what they expected the paint to be. So the store would have a little section of paint that did not come out the desired color in which the customer wanted the paint to come out to be. And they would have the paint on a discount. Uh, they would discount the paint uh, because the previous customer did not want that specific color of that paint because it did not uh, come out to their expectations of what they want to place on the wall. So instead of the store just simply throwing away the paint, they say, you know what, we can still use the paint. Preach on, preach on, preacher. They say, we can still use the paint, okay? We can still sell the paint instead of just discarding the paint. Because eventually someone, we believe, is going to come in and purchase the paint because someone still wants to put the paint on their wall. 
We just need to find the right person that wants to buy that specific paint color to put on the wall. So when me and Lady Tanya saw uh, certain colors of paint the other people put aside, we was like, hmm, we can use that paint. As a matter of fact, if you go to a paint store that has paint that other people discarded, they call it oops paint. <laughs> they call it oops. In other words, somebody made an oopsie when they, when they mixed the color and it did not come out to the way that the previous customer wanted the paint to be. It was a oops. But instead of them throwing away the paint, they said somebody can use the oops that we made. Come here, Grace Center. Just because you made an oops does not mean that God cannot use you. Preach on. If you made some mistakes, God is saying, you know what? I can still use you. You came up short. I can still use you. You missed the mark. I can still use you. You made some oops, but I can still use you. Instead of me throwing you away, putting you in the trash, leaving you out for the dead, discarding you, abandoning you, forsaking you, I'm coming right back around again to simply tell you I can still use you. God came back to Abraham and said, Abraham, I can still use you. I know you all messed up. You got impatient. You made a oops. But I can still use you. I'm not going to discard you. I'm not going to throw you away. Just because you made a oops. Somebody else didn't want you. But I want you. Somebody else threw you away. I'm not going to throw you away. Somebody else walked away from you. I'm not going to do that. Just because you got impatient and yes, you were disobedient. I'm going to come back around again to you, Abraham. I told you in Genesis 15 about how I was going to allow you and your wife to produce a child. You got ahead of me. I didn't like that. I didn't want you to do that. I want you to be patient and wait on me. You do not wait on me. You got impatient. But I'm not going to throw you away. Abraham, Sarah, I can still use you. Uh, I'm so glad, Grace Center, that we serve a God of another chance. Not a second chance. Not a third chance. Not even a fourth chance, but another chance. He will give us chance after chance after chance to get it right. He gave Abraham another chance. Verse 17, it, it, it tells us this. It tells us that Abraham, he falls on his face. In verse 17, he falls on his face. Um, now the question must be asked is, why did he fall on his face? Okay. Why did he fall on his face? Did he stumble? Did he pass out? Was Abraham tipsy? Why did he fall on his face? You see, he, he fell on his face because it was a sign of worship. It was a sign of Abraham worshiping God. You see, when you read the Bible, when you read the word of God, when you will see individuals who are on their face before the Lord, it is a sign of worship. It was a sign that Abraham was worshiping God. Now, let's look at the text. Watch this. He receives an amazing promise from God. And he knew that the promise he just received could not be accomplished in his own strength. He knew this promise could not be accomplished in his own strength. So he decided to worship God. Grace Center, when you know something is outside of the strength and your capability, worship God. 
But not only do I believe that he worshiped God to give him the strength that he needs, I believe he worshiped God because he knew that for him and Sarah to produce a child, this was going to be a miracle. This was going to be an absolute miracle. A miracle, Grace Center, is an extraordinary accomplishment or event that defies natural and scientific laws to produce an outcome with the help of a divine agent. So naturally and scientifically, there is no way, okay, no way that Abraham and Sarah could produce a child at their ages. Naturally, scientifically, at their age, it was no way that they could produce a child. But although there may be a natural law and a scientific law in place, God always has the ability to overrule laws. <laughs> he always has the ability to override all kind of natural laws and scientific laws. And when that happens, that's what we call a miracle. It is a miracle. Because I told you, watch this. I told you before that Abraham and Sarah tried to have a baby for years. But Sarah could not produce a child. All right. That's why Sarah allowed Abraham to sleep with Hagar. <laughs> and then as years later, and God comes back around and he says, the promise is going to be fulfilled. But Sarah is going to have the baby. And since Abraham knew that naturally, scientifically, biologically, <laughs> That this couldn't take place at their age. He fell down. And he worshiped God. As he falls to the ground and worships God. Grace and him. He began to laugh within himself. Now. This laughter. This is not a laugh of unbelief. Neither is, is, is this a laugh of not trusting. And we know this. When you fast forward to Romans chapter 4, verses 19 through 21. Romans chapter 4, verses 19 through 21. It says this. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead. When he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. Watch this. He staggered not. He staggered not. Let me say it again. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God and being Fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. Okay. So Abraham, he never doubted God. Okay. It's simply a laugh of gladness and joy. Okay. But not only was it a laugh of gladness and joy, but I believe he laughed within himself because he knew that God was up to something. He knew that God was up to something. You know, um, around the house here, um, between Lady Tanya and myself, one of us is vertically challenged. <laughs> one of us. You, I let you figure out who it is. Uh, but one of us is, 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 is vertically challenged. And uh, sometimes when things are, are high up, um, um, later time will, will, will ask me to, to, to get some items that's on a 
shelf that's that's higher than what she can reach. Um, so she'll call me uh, from one room to another room uh, to get something where she's standing at. <laughs> uh, I could be upstairs and she's downstairs and I have to leave upstairs to come downstairs to get something that she cannot reach above her head. Um, but she she needs my assistance uh, to help her to get something that's above her head. Uh, she can't reach it. It's out of her reach um, to be able to get it. So she needs the assistance of someone else. Uh, me in those particular cases. Uh, it's above her head. Uh, she wants it. She needs it. But she can't reach it. Um, she, she needs it because she needs to do something with what she can see. She can visualize it. It's right there in front of her, but she cannot reach it. She cannot obtain it. She, she wants it bad, but she needs the assistance of someone else. I think you're following me now. Are, are you tracking with me? You see, sometimes things are above our heads, and we need the assistance of someone else to help us get the things that are above our heads. Uh, it's out of our reach. Uh, we can visualize it. We can almost see it. We can almost uh, take our hand and just grab it. But since it's above our heads, it's out of our reach, and we need the assistance of someone else. In other words, we need the assistance of God himself. We, we need the assistance of the divine. We, we need the assistance of the almighty. We, we need the assistance of Jehovah Jireh. We need the assistance of Jehovah Roha. We need the assistance of God to help us get the things that are above our heads. Grace to this, something is above your head. Oh, just call on, call on God himself. Say, God, this is above my head. This is out of my reach, and I need some assistance to get this thing that I can see, I can visualize, but I need your help. If you need God's help, Grace Center, ask him for assistance. Abraham. My man Abe, he, he knew that he needed God's assistance. So, watch this. He began to worship God. <laughs> yeah. He knew that it was out of his reach. It was above his head. So, he began to worship God. And I suggest to you that if you are faced with a situation that seems like it's too much for you and is out of your hands, worship him. Just worship him. When it's out of your reach, worship him. You know that there is no way it's going to come to pass without his assistance? Worship him. Worship him in the morning. Worship him at noon. Worship him in the evening. Worship him at nighttime. Worship him at the midnight hour. Worship him when he wakes you up at 3 o'clock in the morning. Worship him when you lay down. Worship him when you get up. Worship him in the closet. Worship him outside the closet. Worship him in the car. Worship him outside the car. Worship him in the house. Worship him outside the house. Worship him when no one is around. Worship him when everybody is around. Worship him. Any time is a great time to worship him. If something is out of your reach, worship him. When you need his assistance, worship him. And I think sometimes we miss that important ingredient of receiving a breakthrough. We forget to just worship him. Sometimes when we go to God in prayer, we just get straight to our laundry list of things that we need. 
and we forget to just worship him. Mm. We forget just to raise our hands and just worship him. We we forget just to sometimes just to kind of just remain silent, just to kind of just listen to God. We we forget to do those things. We forget to say, thank you, Lord. We forget to say, thank you, Jesus. We, we forget to say, thank you, Lord, for all that you have done for me and my family. Thank you uh, for the roof over our heads. Thank you, Lord, for, for just taking care of me during, during all this COVID crisis. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for my job. Thank you for my family. Thank you for my neighbors. Thank you, Lord. I, I, I worship you, Lord. I give you the glory, Father. Sometimes we forget just to worship him. We forget just to lay prostrate on the floor. Just worship the Father. Worship the Almighty. He is worthy of all of the worship. And sometimes we forget to do that. We just want to get to our list of things that we, we think we sometimes need. Instead of just worshiping him. If something is out of your hands, when it's out of your reach, when you cannot obtain it in your own strength, worship him. Even in stores, when you go in certain stores, they have a little sticker on a top shelf. If something is on a top shelf that you cannot reach, they'll say, if, if you need assistance... <laughs> From getting items from, from this shelf, call for assistance. You, even stores know that. When something is above your head, Grayson, when you need help getting it from the top shelf and bringing it down to you, just worship him. Worship the Almighty. Hmm. Uh, there are other times, Grace Center, that... When you worship God and you're not really looking for anything in return. Okay. You, you, you're not looking for anything in return from God. Um, I'm, I'm using Lady Tanya a lot today in my message because it's, it's just fitting to use her in this message. Uh, but um, pre-COVID, okay, pre-COVID, when we used to go to... Uh, the movie theater and so forth. A lot of times when we used to go, um, I would tell Lady Tanya, you know, this Friday night, this Saturday night, we're, we're, we're going, you know, to the movies and so forth. And she would be so excited to go to the movies and, and, and so forth. Um, but the funny thing about it is that uh, a lot of the times she had no idea the name of the movie. She didn't know any of the actors and actresses, the plot. She ain't seen no commercials, nothing. So I'm like, yeah, we're going to the movies Friday night, Saturday night or whatever. And she's excited to go, but she has no idea what the movie is about. She has no idea who plays in the movie. She has no idea the plot of the movie. She's just excited that she gets a chance to go with me. She, she, she's just excited about the chance just to, just to spend time together. She's just excited just to be in the presence of one another. She, 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 she gets to the movie theme and be like, okay, now what's this movie about? <laughs> she, she, who played this movie? Okay, okay. She, she has no idea about the movie itself. But she's excited about just being out with me. Um, her husband. Um, you see, there are times, Grace Sandal, that when you worship God, just be excited. Just about being in his presence. Not really needing anything, asking for anything. Just worship God just to be in his presence. Just be like, God, I don't I need things, but right now, I just want to be in your presence. I just want to soak in your presence right now. Yeah, I have a lot of things I need, but you already know the things I need. 
I'm just going to worship you. And I want you to fill this room mm, with your presence. And sometimes that's what we need to do. Sometimes we, need, we just need to take our list of things and just kick it to the side and say, Lord, right now, during this time, I just want to be in your presence. I just want to worship you right now. I'm closing. I'm closing now. Grace Santa, if, if God has told you something and what he has told you is way over your head and maybe you have laughed within yourself and you don't know how in the world is going to take place. My advice to you is this. It's two things. Trust and obey. Trust and obey. That's it. If it's told you something that is just, you're like, man, I, I, don't, I don't know how this is going to come to pass. Trust and obey. Just trust him. Obey him. God will not make you a promise if he's not able to live up to his end of the bargain. Just trust him. Obey him. He has probably made you a promise and told you something. You're like, <laughs> oh, no. Trust him. Obey him. And you just watch God go to work. It may be years. It may not be next month. It may take some years. Maybe. Trust him. And obey him. I have yet received a promise from God and it has not come to pass. Now, certain things are still out there, but I know it's coming to pass. But with things I've seen manifest over time, every promise he's made to me, it has come to pass. <laughs> if I had the time, trust him and obey him. Just be patient. Wait on him. Don't. Don't try to help God out like Sarah did. Like, God, you're, you're taking too long. I knew you said this would happen, but it's not working on my timetable. Trust and obey. Yes, sometimes God will make you laugh. He'll make you say, hmm, just trust him. Obey him. And just watch God fulfill every promise that he has made to you. The virtual doors of the church.